Authorized medicines must be distributed to retail pharmacists and other entities who sell medicine to the general public without any alterations of these medicine properties. However, there is inherent risk that the quality of a medicinal product can be affected throughout the distribution network. Weather conditions, mix-ups, falsifications, equipment status issues and other factors can affect product quality. The good distribution practice guidelines highlight the need for an effective quality management system and appropriate controls for all partners and service providers in the distribution chain, such as manufacturers, wholesalers, warehouses, and transport and logistics providers. In this course, we will discuss relevant aspects of the current GDP requirements and the latest developments in the storage, transportation and cold chain management of medicinal products. This course is part one of good distribution practice according to the EU GDP guideline. Here you will find our interpretation of chapters one to three, quality management, personnel and premises and equipment. According to the EMA, GDP describes the minimum standards a wholesale distributor must meet to ensure the quality and integrity of medicines are maintained throughout the supply chain. There are different people and entities responsible for the handling, storage and distribution of medicinal products. The risks involved are present at different stages of the supply chain. For example, during purchasing, storage, repackaging, relabeling, transportation and distribution. The falsification of medicines and the supply of medicinal products with lower than expected quality are the main concerns here. They present a significant threat to public health and safety. Therefore, it is crucial to keep these products from entering the supply chain. When it comes to quality problems, there can be visible or non-visible defects. Examples of non-visible non-conformities include a product that crystallizes unexpectedly, damaged packaging that makes the content leak, frozen products and the presence of bacterial growth. Additional non-visible quality defects may involve the product's stability, purity, correct quantity or transportation conditions. The number of GDP non-compliance reports has increased in recent years. From 2019 to 2021, the European Medicines Agency published a total of 16 non-conformity reports. The majority of incidents involved the responsible person, premises and storage areas. There are a number of GDP directives, guidelines and reports. The main ones are as follows. There are two directives from the distribution of medicine in the EU. One directive is for medicinal products for veterinary use and the other one is for medicinal products for human use. There are also two guidelines. One GDP guideline is for medicinal products and the other one is for active substances. Now let's review the background of these guidelines. In 2011, the European Union enacted a new directive 2011-62 EU, called the Falsified Medicines Directive. The aim was to prevent counterfeit medicines from entering the legal supply chain. The GDP guidelines were subsequently revised. 2013-C-343-01 took effect in the EU in September 2013 with the aim of providing stricter guidelines to ensure the quality of all activities involving the distribution of medicinal products. The EU guidelines for human use were first published in 1994. 
They were reviewed in March 2013 in order to reflect recent advances in practices for the appropriate storage and distribution of medicinal products in the European Union, as well as the new requirements introduced by Directive 2011-62-EU. There are also two GDP reports from the WHO and a guideline from the PICS. All guidelines are applicable to wholesalers and any other actors involved in the distribution of medicinal products. If you are a manufacturer and also a distributor, the health authority that has inspected you will include the authorization to distribute the medicinal products. Organizations that act as a warehouse to store medicinal products can also obtain the authorization to distribute the products following inspection by the authorities. However, if the organization focuses exclusively on transport, it will not be inspected by the health authorities, nor will it obtain the authorization. It is a responsibility of the manufacturer to make sure the transporter complies with the GDP via supplier qualification and audit. Note that all authorizations can be found on the UDRA GMDP database website. The database focuses on manufacturing, import and wholesale distribution authorizations, as well as good manufacturing practices and good distribution practice certificates. The EU guidelines are applicable to all EU and non-EU manufacturers, importers and distributors of human and veterinary medicines and active substances, which are mentioned in documentation uploaded in the UDRA GMDP database. They are applicable to the European Economic Area, Liechtenstein, Norway, Iceland and all countries with a mutual recognition agreement, including Switzerland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan and the UK. The GDP guideline is divided into 10 chapters. Wholesale distributors need to maintain a quality management system featuring key elements in the GDP environment. These include a quality manual or equivalent documentation approach, documented procedures, assurance to comply with GDP regulations, a change control system that is proportionate, effective and that considers quality risk management principles, processes to ensure records are made contemporaneously, the control and review of outsourced activities, a procedure for documenting deviations, a COPPA system, corrective and preventive actions, and the formal process for reviewing the QMS on a periodic basis, management review. The guideline requires that job descriptions outline the roles and responsibilities of all personnel. A key competent responsible person with appropriate GDP experience must be continuously contactable. This person is responsible for ensuring the following activities are completed, although some of them can be delegated. The activities that can be delegated are in highlighted. A backup plan should be prepared with arrangements for deputizing in the event a key employee is unable to work. The responsible deputy should have the same competences and experience. An organizational chart with clear roles, responsibility and interrelationships of all personnel is mandatory. Regarding training, all personnel involved in wholesale distribution activities should be trained to perform their tasks. Generally speaking, training should be documented and assessed after each module. General training should cover the training plan, a competence matrix, training procedures, and an assessment of the training effectiveness. All documentation and evidence surrounding training should be maintained and provided to inspectors when needed.
There must also be training on specific topics such as narcotics, falsified medicines, temperature sensitive products and radioactive products. These are all mandatory for personnel. Maintaining the wholesale permission is equally important. A job description is a document that clearly states the job requirements, duties, responsibilities and skills required for a specific role. This document defines the authority to make decisions with regard to the assigned responsibilities. We will review an example of a job description for a warehouse operator. This document should have at the very least the following parts. Role description, key responsibilities, education, knowledge and skills, and experience. The role description could be reporting to the warehouse supervisor, responsible for completing day-to-day -day activities and ensuring all processes and procedures are followed in the warehouse according to internal policies and GMP guidelines. The key responsibilities could be to ensure personal protective equipment is worn at all times in the site, to follow the established safety practices and SOPs in order to comply with safety regulations when handling dangerous goods, to inspect, receive and store goods per SOPs, and to keep warehouses and working areas clean and orderly at all times. The education, knowledge and skills for this position could include good understanding of GMP and the ability to understand and follow GMP standard operating procedures and work instructions, and skilled in IT software, Microsoft Office, etc. Ability to put inventory data into material inventory database. The required experience for this position could be two years of prior GMP experience, a valid forklift license, and experience handling dangerous goods. Distributors should have suitable and adequate premises, installation and equipment to ensure the proper storage and distribution of the medicinal product. The most important topic is adequate lighting in the warehouse to ensure all operations can be carried out safely. Temperature control is also crucial. Temperature mapping can reveal the hot and cold spots of the warehouse, informing personnel where they might install a temperature probe. Premises are expected to be clean and dry. As such, cleaning and site maintenance programs are recommended. Access to the premises should be controlled as well. Unauthorized access should be prevented by taking concrete measures. The use of a monitored intruder alarm system and appropriate access control are recommended. The premises should have sufficient capacity to allow the safe storage and handling of the medicinal products. EU guidelines give some indications about the products that need to be segregated in specific areas of the warehouse. These areas should be clearly identified. The receipt and dispatch errors should be separated. These errors should protect products from weather conditions. The reception errors need to have designated places to examine incoming goods with specific procedures in place. Adequate separation between the receipt, dispatch and storage errors is essential. Procedures should be in place to maintain control of all inbound and outbound goods. Reception areas where deliveries are examined following receipt should be designated and suitably equipped. Eating, drinking and smoking are prohibited in the storage areas. 
Therefore, management should provide designated facilities separated from the storage areas. For example, designated areas where personnel can eat. Personal medication is not allowed in the operational areas either. Medication should be kept in lockers. However, exceptions may be appropriate in certain cases. For example, allowing asthmatics to carry reliever inhalers. Exceptions for personal medication should be clearly documented following a risk-based approach. Premises should also be protected from the entry of insects, rodents and other animals. This requirement can be accomplished by implementing a preventive pest control program. Organizations often contract pest control services from an experienced third-party company. Organizations need to have a risk-based integrated pest management program in place where controls are established in areas of high risk or likely pest entries, such as rodent, insect, wildlife and bird. Once the risk points are identified, controls can be placed, such as traps for rodents, insects, termites, birds, etc. The temperature, light, humidity and cleanliness of the premises are factors that could affect the stability of medicinal products. This is why it is so important to store these products in good conditions. First, an initial mapping should be established for temperature, for example in winter and summer. The mapping should be repeated at a defined frequency based on the results of the risk assessment. The mapping is useful for understanding the hot and cold points of the premises. The monitoring devices should be located in areas that show major fluctuations. Alarm and action limits should be set. Whenever there is a temperature excursion, the deviation needs to be recorded and investigated. Subsequently, kappa actions must be applied. All equipment used in storage and distribution should be maintained according to a preventive maintenance plan. Temperature and humidity probes must be calibrated according to national and international standards. The alert and action levels from alarms should be set and regularly tested to ensure they reflect their intended use. The delay alarms can be established according to internal policies and a risk assessment if they are well justified. And finally, all records should be maintained for repair, maintenance and calibration according to data lifecycle best practices. Computerized systems should be validated and verified. The documentation needs to be maintained so that it is always up to date. Data integrity rules require that data only be entered by authorized people and that data is secured from any accidental or unauthorized modification. A backup procedure, restoration system and retention policy should cover at least five years of data storage at a separate and secure location. A procedure should be in place in the event of a breakdown as well. A documented risk assessment can identify the scope and extent of the qualification and validation. All equipment must be qualified before first use and after significant changes are made. An inspector will request to see the following documentation. Protocol, report, data and any deviation reports with Kappa actions implemented. Thank you for attending this course. I hope you find it useful and that you have learned what you expected. See you in other courses at SciLife Academy to continue your learning journey.